Amazing Grace is one of the most beloved hymns. Remember, it reminds us of God's grace extended to us in so many ways. The Greek word for grace is charis. Aristotle defines charis as that which is conferred freely, with no expectation of return, finding its only motive in the bounty and free-heartedness of the giver. But the Lord Jesus gave this word a new and further dimension, as usually this word was used when dealing with friends. But Jesus gave his life for sinners, his enemies, and thus expanded the meaning of that word. This word is sometimes described as great riches at Christ's expense, or undeserved favor. Our salvation, of course, is all of grace. Ephesians 2.8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. But there is another interesting use of the word grace in 1 Peter 4.10. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. In the context, we read of God giving believers various gifts. Each believer has been given a gift or gifts. Not all have the same gift, and thus, as each gift is exercised, the whole body is blessed. God's grace is shown as the various gifts are exercised in the body. God's grace is shown as believers exercise these gifts of helping, or serving, or leading, or giving, or showing mercy, or whatever gift uh, there is. Furthermore, the words in its various forms lead us to another aspect of God's grace. The King James Version translates this phrase as manifold grace of God. Another translation says varied forms of grace. The word uh, means variegated. Our dictionary defines the word variegated as exhibiting different colors, especially as irregular passes, patches or streaks. Kaleidoscope is a good synonym for that word. The colorful plumage of a peacock or the sun shining through a stained glass window would help to illustrate this word. All right, let's consider how this applies to us. First of all, God's grace is shown in the use of our various God-given gifts. And secondly, God's grace is demonstrated in every experience of our lives. It is shown in the black days of sorrow as He sustains and comforts us. It is seen in the blue days of discouragement and depression as He upholds and carries us. It is manifest in the gray days of routine and monotony, yet He never leaves us, He is near us, and He guides us. God's grace is also shown in the bright days of life, in the red and yellow or what, orange or whatever other bright color you would think of, as He gives us joy in victory and service. In other words, regardless of the color of your day or your feelings, God's grace is sufficient. In fact, Romans 5.20 adds another degree to this grace. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. This last phrase is well stated in this paraphrase. Grace existed in superabundance, and then more grace added to this superabundance. In other words, superabundance upon superabundance. That's amazing grace. It doesn't get much better than that. So, when we find ourselves weak, afraid, bewildered, not knowing what is going on or what to expect, as in a pandemic, think on these two things. First of all, the scope of God's grace, every color of our experience. Secondly, the abundance or sufficiency of God's grace. Remember the familiar words in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, where the Lord says to Paul, My grace is sufficient for you, 
for my power is made perfect in weakness. You may not understand it all, but by faith cast yourself on the Lord. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your amazing grace. Thank you that it extends to every experience of our lives and there is always more than enough of it. Thank you for your care and your love. In Jesus' name, amen.